he was going cuckoo. When they asked him what are you looking for, he said, they say my head no day. They say my head come out. Somebody have told you that Proctor, your head seems to be missing. And he believed it literally. So the doctor went in and do said, they search my head. You I beg you don't see my head going anywhere. They say my head no day, my head top. And the guy went on and on till the smoke cleared. Thank God he didn't jump from the window or he didn't go into this. I knew a guy. If you like stories too much. And wearing fine Sunday clothes and sitting and passing the time for an hour or two and hoping that the service will end so that you can go and gossip with your friend and comment about sister so so and so. There's more. When I was not born again, I used to find church so boring. Because my spirit was not in alignment with the spirit of God. My spirit was dead. Are you listening to me? That is why the Bible says, Ye were in time past dead in trespasses. In Ephesians chapter 2. You walk according to the spirit of the power of the air. When I was not born again, when I go to church, I would look at the hymns. Because in that church, they used to sing hymns, and the hymns were numbered. And I know that if there are five hymns, by the time they finish hymn one, the second hymn, maybe hymn number five or two, Blessed Assurance, Jesus, give me, Blessed Assurance is a nice song. So love my Savior, sanctify thy prayers, body of Christ, be thou my saving bread. Oh, no. And I'll be waiting when they will go to him three, him four. Because as you get to him four, I know that ah, seven is about to end, and I'll be free. Some of you, you are born again. Unfortunately, you are in church, but it's as if you are imprisoned. But listen to me. The Bible says, "Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty." It's time for a prison break. I say, it's time to break off from that lukewarmness. Lukewarmness is actually one of the greatest, if not the greatest, dangers in Christianity. Lukewarmness, to be lukewarm. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 16, Jesus Christ said, Because thou art lukewarm and are neither cold nor hot, I will spill you out of my mouth. Fine protocol will not allow me to spit. Next time. You see a pregnant woman spitting. Just remember Revelation chapter 3 verse 16. God says, because you are lukewarm, you are neither hot nor cold. Motro Mojo. Motro Mojo is the definition, is the tree of lukewarm. You don't know it, that's why you're surprised. Motro Mojo. I don't know how it's said in can. But listen, there are many Christians who are on a low level Christian life. As a low level, they are not living the Christian life the way it's supposed to be lived. It's like buying a car. A car that can transport you from one place to another place. Instead of driving the car and enjoying the car and letting it carry you, listen to me. You wake up in the morning, the car can function all right. Then you call some people, Atta, John, AC, I'm a one bomb, come and help me. I said, Daddy, one more bomb here, then we go push car. And you start pushing the car. That's how many people are living their Christian lives. You know, the car has no problem. It's up to you to sit inside, spark the car, -wim 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 -wim. press on the accelerator, roll up the glasses, turn on the air conditioning, put on some music, and move to your destination. Is there a Christian here who is joining me to cross some rivers? I said, there are rivers you must cross. There are rivers you must cross. While the Israelites were going to get to the promised land, they had to first of all get out of Egypt. And when they got out of the one person that they saw was the Red Sea. The Red 
Christianity was a symbol that they were living agents. The Christians today, who say they are born again, they say they have left Egypt, but unfortunately Egypt has not left them. The things that they do, Paul said, seeing that we have renounced the hidden things. They are hidden things. If I had a machine that could go around and play back what everybody did within the past, let's say, even seven days, which you thought only you knew. Imagine, and we're going to play it on the big screen. Some of you, your heart, even as I'm speaking, some of your heart is beating. There are women who are sitting in church on Saturday, Sunday morning, they are not married, but they are carrying some mad spams inside their something. Why? Are you a spam bank? Spam carrier? And you are looking at me. You are looking at me. It's only the Holy Spirit who knows. But that's me to God, you are here. At least you are better than some people who don't come to church. At least you are here. And Pastor Babu told you. If nobody has told me, keep quiet. Why are you, why are you interested? Rapers, you must cross. Am I speaking to somebody? When the Israelites left Egypt, they crossed, the first of all, they crossed the Red Sea. That was symbol, it was symbolic. And for them to enter into the land flowing with local honey, they also needed to cross the Jordan. Are you listening to me? These two crosses represent the crossings that you must have in your life as a Christian. Many people, Sister Deborah, are born again. Fine. Good. They've come forward maybe in the service that they have received um, some prayers and lifted up their hands and the pastor probably said, say after me. And I'm going to do it after the service. Say so after me, um, how do you call it? Um, Lord Jesus, I thank you. You died for me. I was a sinner going to hell. You loved me. Today, I repent. Forgive me. Have mercy on me. Write my name in the book of life. I'll follow you all the days of my life. And the say that genuinely, they repent. But listen to me. It's not enough. I said what? It's not enough. There must be yet another river you must cross. The book of Deuteronomy, for example, is known in Bible theology as uh, the second law. Because in the book of uh, Deuteronomy, Moses took time to, as it were, repeat all the laws and all the things that Jesus Christ, that God has said. Some of us have been born again, especially if you've been born again for years. Sometimes, circumstances, and Jesus Christ said, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall grow cold. Some have been born again for years, they have gotten into a lifestyle, I call it professional Christians. Everyone say after me, professional Christians. They know the jargons, they know the words to say, praise the Lord. But when I say praise the Lord, what's the response? Let's say it in the style, say praise the Lord. All the, all, the, all, all, all the slogans. If you had a good church like I attend, you would even have other slogans that we say mercy, forgive. Jesus is coming. Maranatha. What are some of the things we say? What a shock! Forgive. Shabaya. Hey! And when things, those sayings are what makes us Christians? The time has come, just like the Israelites crossed the Red Sea, and when they had to get to the Promised Land, they had to cross the Jordan. Everyone say Jordan. In this series, I'll be talking about the symbolic meaning of the Jordan. I don't know if got two weeks time. I hope you'll be there. The symbolic meaning of the Jordan. The Jordan, for example, was crossed three times. The first time it was crossed by Joshua. That's the little story we are reading. Crossed by Joshua just before they entered into the promised land. The second time, it was crossed by Elijah and Elisha. When uh, Elisha was in pursuit of Elijah for the double portion, anointing. Elijah told him that if you were to see me. And that's where we had the story. Um, Elijah took the mantle and a sword to the Jordan and departed. Do you remember this Bible? Do we teach them in the, in the, in the Sunday school? And the third time, it was crossed just by um, um, 
can I share a loan? When he was coming back up, he also spoke the river and said, What is the God of Elijah? Is somebody following me? But meanwhile, we are Christians, we are not even interested in knowing what is happening in our Christian life. There are many Christians who have come to a full stop. They just got born again and they think it's okay. And they have stopped somewhere. On the journey to the promised land, listen carefully, God will take you through different experiences. He'll take you through the wilderness. And He will definitely take you through some rivers you must cross. Are you interested in the rivers you must cross? Only one person said yes. I probably will do the several right now. God bless you for lifting up your hands. Because without crossing certain rivers, you do not come into the fullness of the life that God has meant for you as a Christian. The Bible says, deep calleth unto deep, and the noise of that water spots. The book of Psalm says, Am I helping somebody? Let's read. My Bible has disappeared. I said we are reading what? Joshua chapter 3. And we go to verse 1. We go to verse 4. Beautiful. But where's my Bible? I don't know if you believe in signs and wonders. Now listen carefully. In this chapter that we are reading, Joshua got to a place, everybody say a place, where now he was faced with a barrier. Everybody say a barrier. Now for some it will look like a barrier. And I'm speaking to somebody, I don't know in your Christian life, maybe you're going to a place, things look like barriers. It's supposed to be a sign to you that there's something yet you're supposed to do. So you have got into the promised land or to the place where God has for you. And I don't know what God has for you. For everybody, there's a difference between where the promise was made and where the promise is fulfilled. I want to say it again. Where the promise was made and where the promise was fulfilled. For example, when I met my wife, for example, I made her a promise that I was going to marry her. Do you remember that restaurant with the German name? Do you remember that restaurant with the German name? Huh? Not Dorax. The other one, the one who posits the Avoran Embassy. Max Beckerdam. I made a promise that I was going to marry her. But you see, there's one thing to have a promise. I've not have received promises before. Huh? Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Everybody listening to me, I pray that they shall receive great and powerful, precious promises in Jesus' name. And ladies who have had broken hearts before, please forgive me. May God soothe you and comfort you. Because as I mentioned, promise, remember some promise ring that Johnny Waskaracha gave you. Amen. That's the difference between receiving a promise. Yesterday you gave an engagement ring. Still not completed the marriage. It's just a part of it. You just met a family. You need to go through the legal and then also the spiritual, which I believe we'll do next week. In between now and then, everything will be peaceful in Jesus' name. But even from the time that you met your dearly beloved a couple of years or some years ago, and you promised her that you will marry her, you see, they said, Me, 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 May you go to our Abba in Jesus' name. Amen. From the time you made a promise. From the time the promise is fulfilled. And I'm speaking about you. From the time God told you. Either in a vision, through the word of God, through your quiet time, through a prophecy, through the laying on of hands, through whatever, about something that God is going to do for you. And let me just ship this in very quickly. If you're a Christian and you do not take note of what God is telling you, I think there's something wrong. You must remember that God told me this. Because a lot of times, I'll be Benedicta, we remember more of what our boyfriend told us. Remember more of what some younger man told us. Hey, <laughs> I'm 
I'm speaking to somebody here. You are going to cross some rivers in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll definitely go back to Joshua because there's something there I like you to hear. But come with me to First Corinthians. I'm looking for chapter 10. If you find it, say I'm there. Amen. If you are not there, say hold on. If you don't have a Bible, say I'm sorry. If you won't mind me, say I won't mind you. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I will not have you in ignorance. Huh? For those of you who know everything, there's also something you should not be ignorant about. I will not have you ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud. Everybody say under the cloud. And all passed through the sea. Say through the sea. This represents a baptism of water and a baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, in the cloud and in the sea. Are you coming along with me? Listen, like I said, take this sermon on the level that you can. Even Jesus Christ, at a point in time, you are saying that, look, all the things I'm saying, you cannot bear them now, but later you will be able to handle it. Oh, yes. When, when, when I was, when I was, um, um, you like stories too much. Verse 3. And they did eat, they did all eat the spiritual meats. Hey! As I'm sharing the word of God, it's spiritual meat that we are eating. Say amen. amen. Number four, and they did all drink the same spiritual drink. Wow. So the word of God is both meat and drink. Are you listening to me? For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Let me just continue reading because I want to get to a point that will bless you in another way. And this is for somebody, this, that, that point will be for somebody who's going through a hard time. Is there anybody who's going through a hard time? Three people. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, may our eyes be open to see the way of escape in Jesus' name. Amen. But with many of them, God was not well pleased for the overthrown in the wilderness. Now this is somebody who has taken something else. Verse 6, all the way to verse 10. Say after me, verse 6 to verse 10. Verse and you can count about five things there. This is for people who have chosen, instead of taking the pursuits of Christianity is righteousness. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. Instead of taking it, let them say, now they want for Christianity at home also. Let them say it. Take it. Let them call you some money. Let them call you that. Let them give you the names. Because that is when they begin to enjoy Christianity. There's no adventure. What's, what's your name? What's your name, please? Belinda. I think Belinda, my friend. David's cousin, Belinda. Oh, God oh bless you. It's a long time. The other day I was looking, Belinda, don't go. Yeah. You are very spiritual. It's a spirit of God that I brought you here. Yesterday I was looking through and listening. I just saw you. And I said, Belinda. So maybe when I said it, then the spirit of God spoke to you. Wow. God bless you so much. What was I saying? I have many things I'm saying, but I know what the Spirit of God wants to say. That one is not, it's not for me to say. You say what? The what? How we see our Christianity? How we see our Christianity? Unfortunately, how many of us see our Christianity? It's not what God wants our Christianity to, to be. I'm just about to read verse 6, 7, 8. 9 and 10 of First Corinthians. That's why I'm making this preamble. Because these were people that have been rescued. They had been redeemed. They have been delivered from the hands of an oppressor. In the Bible, Pharaoh is a kind of Satan. And the Israelites were under terrible bondage. In Egypt, they were building treasure cities for Pharaoh. They were building Pito and Ramses. Paul will say that the things that the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils. And this, this, Christ, this Israelites have been rescued. That's what the Bible says. We have been bought with the precious blood. The plagues that came, the ten plagues that came, and all the miracles that Moses wrought was to bring or wrought, it wrought a deliverance. Are you listening to me? Some of you are born again. You have been delivered from all sorts of Issues, but the question is, what are you doing with your Christianity, Master Sergeant? What are we 
doing. That is why Paul wrote to the Corinthians and said, I will not have you to be ignorant concerning what happened to our fathers. They passed through the sea, they passed through the cloud, they were baptized into Moses. And Paul was telling them, you know something? That passage, everyone say passage. That passage was supposed to teach us something. And I'm teaching and I'm ending this section very quickly. Some of us do not recognize what Christianity is. I'm preaching on rivers you must cross. I'm teaching somebody to be able to say, yes, if you are born again, I pass through the first river, Red Sea, but there's a Jordan I must go through. That's, that, that's why Paul will say, I die daily. That's why Jesus Christ will say, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross daily, every day. Not on the day you got born again seven years ago. Every day. There are decisions that we take every day. True or false. And there must be a decision you take about your Christian life every day. Look at all the things you do and ask yourself, what is the input you make to your spiritual life on a day-to-day basis as compared to the input you make in your head on a day-to-day basis? I had one lady who was asking a question after the National Science and Maths quiz. She asked the question. She said, so the questions that they asked them at the National Science and Maths quiz, do they teach all of us in school? And as and it is all the questions which I don't understand. And someone responded, I think it was a Twitter. He said, What? It is national science and math space. You thought it was national weight and makeup space. People can triple. You thought it was national weight and makeup space. Mercy. Small question somebody go ask. No one no should come like that. But honestly, think of the investment that you make in your physical body. Think about it. Think about the food you've eaten this corona season. Sometimes you look at somebody's food, you think you are in a zoo. Hey! Let's see the girl will be friend Deborah Lano. I don't know her. I don't know. I, you know anybody like that? I remember when I was in the university, a friend of mine invited us to eat, me and my roommate. So we went to the room, and the food was in the bar corner because that's where we cook. I don't want to lie to you. But Anthony, do you have any bowl like this? Bring it quickly. As me and my roommate, we got to the bar corner, there was yam. Unim yam. Fanciful, or friend, a joke. As a tipo, freno, barrier. Minim sa fasio. Se menim se eye. Punao. Lari boko. Anapunjo. Barrier. The tambo se. Abumu de minkai. Nesuna edos. It was also a lot of stew. We got the near my roommates and we were just in the balcony. The gentleman was in the room. We brought the room and then we were just relaxed. It's like that from the room he shouted, tell you guys make it start. What did they do? Exactly like this. Stand here so that they can see it. The yam was something that was inside like this. Probably not less than about 60 pieces. Hey! So, as me and my reader were waiting, then the guy said, tell you guys you should start. Then I said, then we said, oh, we then wait. The padis. In our mind, we thought that this food is probably for maybe four, five, six people. Because it was a lot. Then the guy from his side, he said, no, just be with me three. He be, 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 be with me three. He said, no, hey! You see, you know why I'm making the story? His standard for biting, biting is the fancy word for eating. Everybody say biting. Cho. His standard for cho was big, extra large. I know when you go to America, when you make a mistake, you order large. You can't even handle it. Huh? Never you been to America, I don't know. Or you didn't go to a restaurant. And yet the, 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 the large 
is very big. So ideally, you have to order one, small or medium. That was the standard. I don't know your standard for Christianity. Maybe your standard for Christianity is that you have just worn a nice dress and you are sitting in church. Today I'm here to tell somebody there are rivers you must cross if you are going to get to the promised land. Let me hear now, amen. amen. And I'm not afraid of the mask. I say I'm not afraid of the mask. Sometimes we can be in church sanctimonious. You see, I have another story to tell, but I don't know whether you can handle it. Maybe if I remember, I'll say it at the end of the preaching. First Corinthians, God bless you. Chapter 10, verse 6, 7, 8, 9. Unfortunately, many Christians who are born again, who should rather be pursuing God, seeking God, seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Like Paul said, forgetting the things that are behind, pressing forward. Hosea says, then shall you know if you press on, if you continue on to know. You're born again, you can speak in tongues, but you have not gone beyond speaking in tongues to desire the gift of the Holy Spirit. A tool that will definitely, or a weapon that will definitely help you in your fight as a Christian. You have not gone on to see certain sacrifices that you are supposed to make. You think that the fact that you were born again some years ago is enough. You have not gone again on to find out what would God have me to do. When people got born again in the New Testament, one of the regular things that they used to say is, what would you have me to do? God, what would you have me to do? Born again is not just a name we wear or a t-shirt that we wear with the description, Jesus is Lord. Wait. Jesus is Lord, but you don't, you don't even consult the word of God one bit when you are making a decision. Is somebody here with me. And unfortunately, this Israelites, they have moved away. They have done what? They have moved away from the spiritual things that took them from bondage. And now they were into things. You want to hear the things that they were doing? Do you want to hear? First Corinthians chapter 10, number 6. The Bible says, when you look at verse 5, it says, many of them, God was not well pleased for the overthrown. Let's be careful that God doesn't become displeased with us. Have I told you that if we are lukewarm, he says he will spew us out of our mouth? Have I told you? Challenging somebody. Maybe it's, maybe you shouldn't have come to service today. At times we are here. And by the finger and the power of God, you are changing from glory to glory. If you are that one, let me hear loud. Amen. Amen. Now, these things were for our examples. Verse 6. To the intent that we should not last after evil things as they lasted. Hey. Verse 7. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written, that people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. That is evident today. You see, Christians, they don't seem to amount to anything apart from let's eat and drink for tomorrow we die. I'm not talking even about alcohol. I'm just talking about just pleasures of life. Pleasure, just normal pleasures. Or as the Bible says in the book of Psalms, verse 11, chapter 11, verse 16, in his presence, the fullness of joy. At his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Meanwhile, we are looking for pleasure in Kotun race to you. Neither should we be idolaters. When you hear the word idolaters, you can easily think about just idol worship and you say, oh, but Pastor, I, mean, I don't have any idol in my house. Anything that you elevate higher than God is an idol in your life. Anything that you give attention to unduly is an idol. This can be an idol. This, this. Everybody who has a phone, lift it up. It doesn't matter if you are doing a watch party on it. Lift it. Say, say after me, this thing easily is a modern day idol. idol. In the name of Jesus. All things are lawful. But not all things edify. All things are lawful. But I will not be brought the power of any. Some of you are not the power of your phones. You wake up in the morning, that's the first thing you reach out for. I see it is an oxygen mask. If 
even what? What is on your battery? You are tense. You are looking for the nearest charger. You can even, I saw a meme, and it is so symbolic. The meme, a meme is like a picture. Somebody was in the hospital. He was connected to sardine and man oxygen. And unfortunately, his phone was on low battery. He needed to charge. You can guess, your guess is as good as mine. What did he do? He removed the Minim profono, minim sa oxygen yom and oxygen. He removed the plug that was giving the oxygen and then he plugged in his phone. His phone started to charge, but unfortunately he died. Some of you, the phone is an idol. And eh, Pastor, let's be real. This phone is the children. Me, at my age, and I don't even use phone. Eh, maybe a funeral is your idol. Hey, I don't know what is your idol. You don't know what is your idol. Never be idolaters, as some of them were. I don't know. The Christians who bought the food and become their idol. And I had a guy when I was in school who used to tell me, Adrian Abel say, made my yari. For the food to spoil, I will eat and get sick. Hey! Be eating, they eat. Anything that can be chewed, they chew. Anything that can be licked, they lick. Anything that can be swallowed, they swallowed. Hey! I have a friend, he calls his wife motorway. When I checked, he said, The mouth is like the motorway. There's always a car on it. In other words, there's always food moving up. Ask somebody, Are you motorway? Hey! There are men. Anything is kept. I should go there. When you watch some of these movies, this, um, how do you call it, bold and beautiful, days of our life, one of the things I've noticed is that before the series ends, everybody marries everybody. That's one of them, days of our life. Brother marries his brother's wife, who has been divorced, grandfather marries his grandson's wife. I mean, it's as if they are just... Sh- Today, even in the first world, there's something called wife swapping. Yes. Oh, yes! They call them swingers. So as you marry, they are looking, as they go out, they are looking for somebody. So a couple can be going around, and because they have something they call open marriage. Ah. Oh, yeah! Who did that one? God forbid it will never happen. Yes. But as somebody's going with their husband or wife, they meet another couple, and then they will just exchange yes. for the weekend. Who has heard of it before? Before it looks like I'm saying the wrong thing. Yeah. So it's wild though. When you don't follow God, the thing that the devil can lead you to. That's why I'm challenging somebody that cross the rivers. Cross the rivers. Symbolically, the rivers also represent the Holy Ghost. Point number four. The Holy Ghost. Amen. I said, if you some of you like points, that's why I'm giving the points. But let me read my scriptures. Now verse 8. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. This, this point, I, I think there are more people who are qualified to speak on it than me. There are people who sit in church, they are experienced fornicators. They can do. You are quiet. Just take the scripture, neither let us. Let, let, let's leave it there. Let, let, can we leave it there? Yes. Let's, let's leave it there. Some of you are carrying condoms right now as I'm preaching. Yes. And you are not married. Who is that? You are not married. Yes. And it's not Christmas time when you say this balloon. Yes. So Christmas time, so hey, balloon. Hey! Yes. Put your hand on your head and say, Lord, have mercy on me. Christ, and some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. We'll go into that as we go along. Tempting Christ. Number 10. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the strength. Memory is one of the dangerous things that can happen to anybody. Memory is a product of discontent. Memory is what? A product of discontent. That's what Paul will say. I've learned in one of our states to be content. I've learned to abound and I've learned. So I was speaking to the pastor like that. 
And when that first came up, he said, Suffer. Oh, yeah, not abuse. Well, I don't know. So that the abasement is too much. It is part of life sometimes. It's part of life sometimes. Didn't Jesus Christ humble himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of a cross? And you cannot humble yourself. Just because you are married, nobody can call you. Now your workings are even changed. When you are not married, when they call you, you will run. Now you are married, when they call you, Church, you can have people who remember complain about almost everything. Look, if you are busy serving God, you have no time complaining. You have no time remembering. If you are really busy serving God, you are focused. Didn't I tell you that normally when I'm going to town, I, I, I when I'm driving on the motorway, I bath, I bath inside my car. More than Mr. B. I take a bucket of water. And then I put it inside my driver's seat, back it when I take my sponge, and I take my soap, and I take my towel. I like the look on your face. If the camera was pretty, so I put it there. Oh, that's everything. I back inside, I hold the camera on the motorway. I'm holding the steer like that, and then my sponge, you can chew it on the Hey! Is it real? Is it possible? Because on the bottom where I need full concentration, I cannot afford. I cannot afford. Me and Peter, we don't have any appointments. Say, Peter, till I cross 70, 80, 90, till I accomplish the time that God has for me on this earth. I, I need to, I need to look on the road. Those of you who are, who are driving and are looking for girls. <laughs> this is the girls are looking for the boys. So, so it's important. Possible for me to be driving and then bathing at the same time. Likewise, it, is, it should be possible for you to be serving God, Mr. Isaac, at a certain level and even have energy and time to be remembering. It's only when you don't have any focus on you, it's only when you don't have the promised land, it's only when you don't have another world in view. That's what the Bible calls us sojourners. The Bible calls us strangers and pilgrims. The Bible describes Abraham. It says that Abraham, he was looking for a city without foundations, whose maker and builder is God. What are you looking for as a Christian? The latest dress, the latest wig, the latest shoe. What are you looking for? Abraham, Bible says, was looking for a city without without worldly foundations. I'm just about to close. Rivers, you must close. If you are going to enter into the promised land, ladies and gentlemen, you need a certain baptism of the Holy Spirit. You need an anointing that the Holy Spirit can give you. In the Old Testament, we didn't see the Holy Spirit. It was not given. So we do not even have things like Pastors. We have just had a prophet. We didn't have things like the pastor. We didn't have the evangelist. In a certain sense, Jonah was a kind of evangelist. But we didn't have it the way we have it. Are you listening to me? Because the Holy Spirit was not given. It is not natural to be a shepherd. It's not natural to be a pastor. It's not natural to look after people. It's a unnatural thing. It's a, it's a very unnatural thing. I'm telling you. Paul said, I have no man like minded who would naturally care for you. For all care for themselves and all the things of God. It's not natural. It's not natural. Don't think it's natural. Don't think it's natural to look after other people. You need the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, every time of us, we're only thinking of ourselves. Selfishness is rooted and embedded in our DNA. Selfishness. Everyone is thinking of himself. It takes the Holy Spirit. And it takes what? The Holy Spirit for you to think about so to say, I'm going to visit. That's why they have regrets you must cross. I said, that's why they are what? Rivers. My How many of us we are going to cross some rivers in this COVID season? Because the vision that God has given you, the promise that God has given you, you would have to pass through some rivers. Ladies and gentlemen, Jordan was crossed 
by Joshua and you are going to cross and I'm prophesying to somebody I just feel it in my spirit some of you there are some wonders you have not seen come back with me to Joshua as we go Joshua chapter 3 some of you there are some wonders you have not seen but as you determine to cross this rivers I say some of you, there are some miracles you have not seen yet. But as you determine to cross these rivers, is somebody here with me? Is there somebody here who has an expectation of something that God has for him, but it looks as if it's delaying? Is there somebody here? Like, am I in the church or am I where? Only two people. All of you, you have arrived. All of you, you have everything. You have need of nothing. You are rich and you are wealthy and you are powerful and you have need of nothing. Is there somebody who is expecting God? Is there anybody in this church who is expecting God? Who is expecting a move of God in his life, either in your finances, either in your marriage, or I don't know what you are looking for. Is there anybody who is believing God for something? But there are rivers you must cross. And it's time for you to enter some of these rivers. I say it's time. Can we just conclude? Where is Joshua? Where is Joshua? The last time I mentioned where is Enoch. And I was preaching the title of the sermon was Enoch. Can't you do just a little bit more? There was a guy in the church who was called Enoch. And he was supposed to come and play the keyboard. And he was at home. Where he heard on the Facebook. The bishop was saying, I was saying, Enoch, can't you do just a little bit more? And he thought I was referring to him. Come and see running. <laughs> Today your name might not be Joshua. <laughs> but listen, we are just about to close. Tell somebody there's no high. Like the most high. I'm challenging you. If you're going to seek the kingdom of heaven, you realize that there's no adventure in life. I am telling you, I want to jump from a plane. And Pastor, you have to help me to jump from the plane. Yeah? I've gone on the jet ski, the one that killed Castro. I've gone on it. On the waters of uh, Ghana waters is what? This is Atlantic or Pacific or whatever. Atlantic. I've gone on the Atlantic. Come on, uh, one hour to an island in back. In Jamaica, as we're going at the point, I look at the waters and say, Sam, did you know? <laughs> but I enjoy it. I've gone on horseback. I've done, I've done, I've done water slides. I'm, I've gone into a cage of lions. Hey! I've gone face to face with a, a, a bear before, a bear. You, have you seen a bear before? But the bear, the bear was in a cage. Yeah. But see, all these things does not compare. I'm driven at a speed, I don't want to mention to you because my wife will see, I'm driven at that speed. At a speed. I remember once I was driving from, from Zambia to Zimbabwe. About seven, eight miles. I was driving, I was, I was driving, and I would look when the children are asleep, my wife's asleep. Hey! I have a son here, he remembers. One day I, I lived in Kumasa, I came to drop my wife in Accra. She was traveling, she came to drop at the airport every return. I was with this small boy. Once I came to Accra, he said, don't do these things. Do this. I said, I'm just saying that you can be interested in a rush. I was say rush, R-U-S-H. Rush, there's something adrenaline rush. You can be interested in something that is to Some of you is sex. It's sex. Mm -hmm. Some of you, when the rain rains, then you say, hey, this weather. So long, so long. This weather, I wish, I wish a queer and and um, um, uh, will come. Are you Noah? I said, are you Noah? It was only Noah when it was raining that he was calling people to come. <laughs> I'm challenging somebody, your Christian life. Look, I need to close. I need to close. In Joshua, ask somebody, are you Noah? <laughs> In Joshua chapter 3, listen very carefully. This is a miracle that's going to happen to you this week. Say amen. amen. I said, This is a miracle that's going to happen to you. Are you listening? Hmm. In Joshua chapter 3, verse 13.
everything and it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of, your, of the feet of the priest that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, then, shall rest in the waters of Jordan. I'm talking about rivers from across. And this is the Joshua was one of the few people, two people, who actually came from Egypt and had entered into the promised land. Are you aware? Yeah. They were the two people who were sent to spy the land to see whether it was filled with milk and honey. Two, Joshua and Caleb. Minority, and they came back with the good reports. Joshua said, Look, the people they are praying we will conquer them. God is on our side. They don't have any defense. I'm talking to somebody here who is serving God, and you have become like a this, like a that. Is it the true Christianity is when you are lukewarm? God is about to speak to you out of your mouth. Praise God that I'm preaching to you today. And I'm preaching to myself also. I don't think I've arrived at all. There are higher highs, there are deeper seas. Whatever you need to do, Lord, do it in me. Listen very carefully. Everything is about to happen to somebody who is about to step into the Jordan. If it is you, let me hear a loud Amen! Stop that lackadaisical, lazy, lukewarm, look lethargic kind of break out of prison. I said break out. Break out of the prison that you have put yourself in. It's time for prison break. Come on. I said it's time for a prison break. The Bible says it shall come to pass when your feet shall rest in the waters that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come from above and it shall stand upon a hill. Can you imagine? Water is coming and it just stops. The water is coming and it just stops. That's the miracle that's going to happen in your life. In Jesus name. Yes. Jump with me. Verse 15. And as they that bear the ark will come unto Jordan and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were deep in the brim of the water, for Jordan overflowed all these banks at the time of harvest. And this is for somebody, you might seem overwhelmed with the issues. Maybe you are thinking of some debts. Maybe you are thinking of some issues. Uh, who is going to marry me? When am I going to have a child? As uh, would I go to pay these school fees? Would I come out in six situation? As you decide to cross the rivers that is in front of you. Listen, this is your testimony. That the waters were sixteen, Joshua chapter three, which came down from above stood and rose up upon a heap, very far from the city, Adam, beside Zaretan. And those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea, they filled and were cut off. And the people they passed over right against Jericho. I see you passing over to your promised land. I say, I see you passing over to your promised land. I say, I see you passing over to your promised land. I see you passing over to your promised land. I don't know what you have been waiting for God to do in your life. I don't know what promise has been said. I don't know what expectation, the expectations of the righteous shall not be cut off. But only if you will decide to cross some rivers. I don't know the rivers ahead of you. I don't know the rivers ahead of you. But it's time to decide to cross some rivers. It's time to decide to allow the Holy Spirit to influence you. Listen carefully, the influence of the Holy Spirit is it's, 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 it's now. It's now. That's why the Bible says, be not drunk with wine, wherein there's excess. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 18, I believe. But be filled with the Spirit. As you cross the rivers, there's a feeling of the Spirit. That is coming over you. As you sit, you don't need to stand up. I want you to begin to pray. I want you to begin to pray. That God will open your eyes to be able to see the rivers in this cross. From today, you're going to be excited about spiritual things. A woman's bodice is not going to excite you. The way the word of God is exciting you. It's possible. I just heard, I just, I just, I just heard in the realm of the spirit. Somebody say, but I cannot, I cannot. Yes, by the spirit of God you can. I say, by the spirit of God you can. By the spirit of God you can. That's why Jesus Christ will say, when he, the spirit of truth, is come. Give me John 16, verse 13. Kara kara kata. Everybody just pray. Kurikari katayanda, Murikira kata 
higher than. In verse 12, Jesus Christ said, I have many things to share with you, but you cannot bear them. But you know how you're going to handle the things that God has for you? The Holy Spirit. Everybody pray. Pray for the Holy Spirit. Pray for the Holy Spirit. I will never be the same again. I will never be the same. Stand to your feet wherever you are. I will never be the same.
up towards Christianity. So just a Christian being like Michael. Or Saul, or Emmanuel, or Ebenezer. Christianity goes beyond just a name. Maybe you have limited Christianity to a cross that you wear, a fanciful cross. Maybe you are saying that Christianity is because I identify with this church, Lighthouse Chapel, or this or that church. There's a baptism, there's a river. You might be born again, alright. Or you haven't been born again. I want to pray with you. I don't know who I'm praying with, but I'm praying with everybody. Specifically, I'm praying with you if you are not born again. But you want to say, Pastor, I want to be born again. All that you're talking about, I don't think I'm, I know it. I know a Christian song. I know a Christian chapel. I know some words. I even have a Bible. But I don't think I'm born again. And Jesus Christ says that. This is a record that God has given us eternal life. And this is Jesus. He said, He that has the Son, He has Jesus. He that doesn't have the Son, He doesn't have Jesus. If you don't have Jesus, if you don't have Jesus, if you don't have Jesus, you don't have life. You don't have, you can have everything. Then Jesus is not your Savior. If it's even just one person that God is calling today to be born again, I want to pray with you. Every eye closed and every head is bowed. Every eye closed and every head is bowed. Career has to put it. Don't say I'm staying too long in church. Don't say that. Don't say that. Carry camera. What is it that the one who created you is asking you to be in fellowship? Yes. 
something that I can't, I can't think of, I can't. But Lord, your word says that with God all things are possible. I pray for the people, I pray for the weak, I pray for the down of hearts, I pray for the depressed, I pray for those that have been afflicted by voices of the devil, voices of the devil. And now I declare by the finger of God, your word says that if I, by the finger of God, I cut out devils, that the kingdom of heaven is among you, I declare the name of God by the finger of God. I rebuke every satanic voice that has been speaking to your children, whispering to them, every stronghold in the name of Jesus, I pull it down. Every stronghold, your word says the weapons of our warfare are not coming. The mighty will of God to the pudding that was troubled. I put up every stronghold in the minds of people. Every setback, I declare, it shall be a comeback to God in Jesus' name. Mari kati koro kutu yiki bro kutu ya kabro kutu ya na. Rasi kati ya kara kata ya na ya kata kata tanda. Mure kata, some have been hurt so bad. You are so bad, and you say, I will do this to show, to show, to show, to show what? I pray for the healing power of Gilead.
for certain reasons, I said you should come. There's a mother, our parents, he said, what a child is doing, he said, now, nah, I don't know who you are. I don't know who you are. Let your living waters flow from my soul. Bring it. Amazing love, how 